In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. 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 If you would go with me, please, to Philippians chapter 2. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Did you have a good week? Amen. Amen. Looks like a lot of people are still enjoying the 4th of July. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Philippians chapter 2, verse number 12 is really what I wanted to start with, but this is such a beautiful chapter. The Word of God is good. Amen. Amen. Yes, it is. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Isn't God good ever? Yes. God is good all the time. All the time. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but much more in my, in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Now I want you to notice verse 12. Verse 12 says, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. This verse of scripture came to me last night. And we're going to look at others along with it. You know, we are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. But there's much of the church, my brother and sister, they live in a way that they don't work out their salvation with fear and trembling. They do what they want to do instead of what the Lord Jesus Christ has called us to do. Amen. Amen. The Bible says we are to work on our salvation with fear and trembling. The Bible also says, thank you, Lord, that, that you are no longer your own. Is what the Lord just gave me. You're no longer your own. You've been bought with a price. And we are to glorify God in our body and in our spirit, which are His. Amen. 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 And so we're, there's, some, there's some days that are coming that are ahead of us. And just as God severed the land of Goshen, from the, the diseases that came upon the Egyptians, he will sever his people. But God is saying to you and I today, serve him now and be prepared. You know, there's some people that only call upon the Lord when they need him. Amen. But God is looking for a people that will serve him. As the scripture says, Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with a little of your heart. Amen. No, with all. Right. And a lot of times I've heard people say, and, and you, know where you know where they're coming from. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> and I heard people say, well, I just love brother and sister so and so with all my heart. You should not. You should love the Lord with all your heart. Because right. I don't love you with all my heart. I love you as I love myself. That's right. But I love the Lord more than I love my wife. I love the Lord more than I love my children. I love the Lord more than I love anyone. I'm just saying this. That should be that way with any child of God. Because you nothing should have all your heart except Him. That's right. Amen. Amen. You should love Him with every fiber of your being. Amen. And so the scripture tells us to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Have you ever been at the place? Ethan, and all of a sudden you see it and you're like, God, I'm sorry. And, and I'm sorry, Lord, forgive me if we said something wrong. I have said things that wasn't, it wasn't that I thought was bad. And the Holy Spirit checked me and said, you shouldn't have said that. And you think, Lord, that was, because something that wouldn't, wouldn't grieve.
grieve you could grieve him. Now, I don't use the word hate in my vocabulary. Do you hear? Amen. Because there's no hate in me. And then Jesus said, the first thing he said about love was in Matthew 5, 44, love your enemies. That's right. Amen. You are to love your enemy like you love your best friend. That's right. The Lord spoke to me years ago, and he says, if I commanded you to love your enemies, how much more should you love your brother? That's right. Amen. Hate should not be in the believer's vocabulary. That word should never come out of our mouth because we are children of love. God is love. I am the child of the Most High God. Amen. You've been born again. You've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Your sins have been washed away. You accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You are a child of God. You are a child of love. Amen. And the scripture tells us here where Paul, speaking by the Spirit of God, in verse 12 said, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but much more in my absence. You know, it's easy for me to serve God in front of, in here. But God is looking at you to see how you serve him out this wall. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's good. Matter of fact, God really doesn't look at you in here. He looks at you when you're away from here. God is looking to see how you are going to obey Him outside of these four walls when you're out in the world and you're around people that you don't like, that you don't care for, or you're around people maybe on the job that's maybe done you wrong, or maybe you're by yourself and you're being tested and you're being tempted. God is watching there. He's watching you in your faithfulness. To him. Because, my dear brother and sister, this day and time, oh, thank you, Lord. The Lord just brought this to me that Moses told Israel that the people of God should cleave unto their Lord. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is to cleave unto the Lord Jesus Christ, and we are not to come and go. Amen. You need him in this day and time more than any other. Amen. And if it wasn't for the Lord, I would be dead right now. And many of you would be dead right now. That's right. If it wasn't for Jesus. Because there is, I'm going to share something with you this morning. There is the hedge of God upon certain people in the church. And I'm going to share something. And many people are maybe not going to like it. That are not believing to the Lord. But the hedge of God is not upon every child of God. I'm just being honest with you, and I'm going to share that with you through Scripture. Amen? There's some that say, well, I, I, as long as I believe in the Lord, I can, I can do anything and say anything I want. Jesus redeemed. He shed His blood to redeem us from sin, not to live in it. He redeemed you and I. Oh, thank you, Lord. Let me use the word free. He freed you and I from sin. Amen. Amen. He shed his blood. He didn't free you from sin to live in it. Amen. And to shout out with the devil. Amen. Amen. And so, I'm sharing with you today about work out your own salvation with fear and trembling because there's other things. Listen, I need God every day, but there's some bad times that's coming. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. Do you want me to tickle you here? I mean, if you don't believe that, read the book of Revelation. Come on. <laughs> There's coming a day when people are going to get their heads up. Yeah. You're going to make a decision, you know, to follow him. Or, well, thank you, Lord. There's people that's already giving their heads up. That's right. Overseas, across the waters. Amen. There's people that have been burned at the stake. Yeah, that's right. And let me share this with you again because I need to share this with you because I'm preaching to you reality this morning. You know, you have the mindset of the church, we're not going to suffer persecution. Where would you hear that from? Because in Timothy it says, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. No, the church is not appointed unto wrath. Right. Persecution and wrath, the wrath of God, are totally two different things. 
If you read, Jesus was persecuted. The early church in the book of Acts, a great persecution came upon the church. Yes. The, the church has been persecuted ever since Jesus walked the earth. Oh, thank you, Lord. The Lord gave me this. Even the prophets were persecuted before him. That's right. That's right. And, for, and yet, I've heard people say, well, I'm not going to suffer persecution. I'm a Christian. Where have you heard that at? That was error. Yeah, really. All that will live godly in Christ. And, well, thank you, Lord. And if you're not suffering persecution, you need to check up on your walk with him. Come on. If you're not being persecuted, talked about, or lied about, or criticized, you need to check up on your walk because those that suffer persecution are living for him. Mm -hmm. All, listen to what the scripture says, all, A-double-L, that will live godly. You know, Brother Dennis, I don't like being persecuted. If you're going to follow Christ, it comes with it. It comes with walking with him. It's a part of it. Are you here? Yes. It's a part of it. When you walk with him, it's a part of being persecuted. Yes. It comes with it. Yes. Amen. Amen. Tell that to the early church. Some of them were crucified. Many of them were crucified. One was crucified upside down. Many were beheaded. Many were killed by the sword. And even overseas. And you heard me tell you about the story of the family that were persecuted. They took the mother, the father, and the two daughters. In Syria. Persecution. It strengthens the church. Amen. Amen. God wants you faithful to him in the good times. And it's easy for me to serve God when everything's going good. It's easy for you to serve God when the bank account's full. Your body is nothing's wrong with your body. Who can't serve God? Well, there's many people that don't serve God under those conditions, but we can serve God easy under those conditions. But when persecution comes, then your faith is tested. As it says in the first chapter of 1 Peter, the trying of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes. So I just want to prepare you. Amen? Amen. You need to be prepared in this day and time. And many people treat Jesus, they don't work out their, fear, their salvation with fear and trembling. They're nonchalant. Oh, well, I'll go to church today if I want to. Or, or you know, well, nobody's looking. Remember, he says, hey, you obey in my absence. That's right. Yes. You know, God's looking at you when you're away, when you're by yourself. Are you here? Amen. Amen. God's watching you when you're by yourself. When no one's around, then he's watching you maybe around some friends. To see if you side in with them or you stay sided in with him and his word. Yeah. And the Lord just brought this scripture to me, Hebrews 12, 14. Follow peace with all men in holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Right. I'm going to believe the word. Amen. 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 And thank God for the grace of God and the mercy of God. But many people abuse it, step on it, walk over it, and spit on it. And abuse it and think they can say and do anything they want and say, Well, I'm going to heaven. And then a lot of times we steer people away from Christ. I remember years ago, now I haven't had any, any I, I believe in crucifying my flesh, and yes, if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. First John 1 9 says, If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank God for His mercy. But I believe in presenting my body a whole, holy to Him. As the Scripture says in Romans 12, 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, brethren, amen, amen, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. And here's the word many people don't like to hear. But when you're born again, you can do it. It's those that's religious that have not been born again that have a problem with it. Holy. I'm letting you, I need to share this with you this morning because if you want to hedge your God, you've got to cleave to him like Moses told the Israelites. That's right. Amen. You know, a lot of people want to cleave to something else besides God. Well, Lord, I'll cleave to you when I need you. It doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't. God is looking for a people that are cleaved to him. Yes. Amen. That love him, as Jesus said, with all their heart, with all their mind, with all their strength. With everything that they are, that 
Jesus Christ is their number one goal in life. Yes. Amen. Amen. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, obedience. Not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's how we are to serve the Lord. We are to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. Amen. Now go with me please to Psalm 91. Glory to God. Don't you love him? Amen. Amen. Yes. The Bible says taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, she tasted of him. Yes. I've tasted of that world, but I also tasted of him. Right. He's much better. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen, Carol. He's much better, isn't he? Psalm 91. Now, Psalms 91 talks about the hedge of God. You know, Brother Holly, isn't that something? You didn't even know what I was going to preach this morning. And he mentioned Job to me earlier. And I'm not going the way of Job, but I'm off on the hedge of God. Job had a hedge around him. Yeah. Amen, Paul. Boom! There was a hedge blast. But what? Because Job was so concerned about serving God, he made sacrifices for his children. I mean, he was so concerned for his children, himself, his family. His mind was fixed on God. He served the Lord in fear and trembling. No, he didn't serve the Lord nonchalant or carelessly. No, he, did. he did not. He loved his God. And by doing so, there was a hedge placed around him. And the devil couldn't touch him until one day the devil said, if you will remove the hedge, he will curse you. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord removed the hedge and said, go, but don't take his life. Job lost it. He lost everything. Amen. But he did lose his faith in his God. Amen. That's right. Woo, glory to God. I serve just went through me there. I love him, don't you? Yes. Don't yes. you so love him? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, if you're there at Psalm 91, look at Psalm 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth, I want you to notice the word dwelleth. Yes. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. Now, he that dwelleth, it didn't say he that comes, he goes. It says he that dwelleth. We are to dwell. I don't want, if, I go, if I don't dwell and I go over here in these gray areas, I'll be fearful. The devil can get a hold of me. Yeah. Are you here? That doesn't mean we don't resist the devil. You follow me. I'm just saying that doesn't mean we're not going to be tested or tried right. or tempted. Are you here? Just like Psalms 23 says, He prepares a table before me in the presence of who? Yes. My enemies. Yes. Amen. The enemies are saying, look over here. Come away from the table. No, stay at the table. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. You know, God is saying to His people to serve Him in fear and trembling. And I'll be honest with you, thank you, Lord. The Lord brought that verse of scripture to me. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. The beginning of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Listen, when we fear God, when we fear God, that's wisdom, my brother and sister. Of course, wisdom is in salvation. Another translation might say salvation. King James says wisdom, but what is salvation? Salvation is everything that God offers. Amen. Salvation yes. is wisdom, healing, the new birth, yes. safety. Matter of fact, Psalms 91 verse 16 here it says with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Another translation says with long life will I satisfy him and show him my deliverance. 
Why? Because deliverance is in salvation. Yeah. Salvation is everything that God offers. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But God is saying, listen to me carefully. God is saying to love Him. Don't allow the devil to use anything to take you away from him. Amen. And so we see here, he that dwelleth, he, the person, male or female, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There is a secret place, and it's only found in Jesus. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. Who is? The Lord is my refuge. Yes. Not money, not mama and daddy. Are you here? Who is your, not husband and wife? I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God in Him. Will I trust? Amen. Now, years ago, my daddy, when he was alive, he went over to be with the Lord at 91 and a half. Glory to God. He's with Jesus. Amen. Amen. 91 and a half. He wasn't ashamed of the Lord either. He didn't get saved until he was 79 or 80. He used to be a womanizer. He used to like his women. <laughs> but when he was saved, he put that off. Yes. Well, he's a born again now. Amen. Woo! My mama called me one day. My mama called me one day. This is after daddy was saved. Let me tell you what the new birth will do to someone. When someone accepts Jesus. My daddy got saved. Now he didn't get saved until around 79 or 80. I always went over there and water, gave him the word and water. My dad used to believe that when you was dead, you were dead. That was the end of it. He believed that. And I used to share with him, and his mama used to teach him the Bible, but he, I guess he just thought for some reason when man died, he was dead. That was it. And I would go over there and say, Daddy, your mama's still living. You know, and he'd say, Why you look at him? He said, My mama ain't still living. I said, Not in her body, she ain't, but in her spirit, she's alive. She knew Jesus. Are you here? Well, he didn't understand that, but you know what? I kept bringing the word to him. I kept taking the word to him and reading to him. I was his only preacher. And it don't know him. Lord, see, it takes the word. Amen. It don't know him one day. Well, he gets born again. My daddy does. And him and my mama got in a little spat. And he called me because his conscience is bothering him now. He's a saved man. He called me. He says, son, me and your mama got into a spat. Will you call her and tell her I'm sorry? <laughs> I said, Daddy, don't you think you need to call her and tell her you're sorry? He said, he said, yeah. And so I asked Mama later, I said, Mama, did Daddy call you and tell you he was sorry? She said these words, what in the world has got into these hymns? The new birth. Amen. He got saved. And when a person gets saved, they're not the same. That's right. That's right. Because when a person gets saved, or, or you hear what I, it would be saying for him. When you get saved, you're not the same. If you're still living the same simple, ungodly lifestyle, well, then you need to check up. Right. Listen, I believed in Jesus when I was sipping and tipping and lusting in the bars and blue halls. The mafia in Chicago goes to church and they believe in Jesus. The mob, the mob does. Yeah. Are you here? But how some people preach this gospel, no matter, just believe in the Lord with all the mafia things going to heaven in their sinful lifestyle. No, you will never get me to believe that false gospel. Are you here? Without hope, and you get saved, you want to live holy, you want to live right. The moment you see and you, your spirit grieves, you repent before God because you know it wrong. Amen. Look with me at verse 3. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noiseful pestilence. Notice that. This is the guy that dwells, the man or the woman, that dwells in the secret place, the hedge of God. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare 
of a fowler and from the noisome pestilence. i got to stop right here because this just came to me. God severed Goshen. Now, stay with me for a minute. The Lord severed his people from the diseases and the plagues of Egypt. There was a dividing. There was a severing. In the sixth chapter of Daniel, Daniel was severed. He knew that the decree was signed and his window is still being up. He wasn't to pray to know God for 30 days. But Daniel knew they were trying to catch Daniel. See, not everybody likes Christians or people that follow God. Daniel followed his God. And there was people that were jealous of him in the kingdom. And they tricked the king into making a decree that if any man asked any petition of any God or man for 30 days, say, or accept thee, O king, should be cast into the den of lions. See, they tricked the king. Because the king, Darius, loved Daniel. And he signed that writing. And the Bible says, I believe it's in 1 10, 6th chapter of Daniel, that Daniel, knowing the writing has been signed, nailed as he did before time and prayed unto his God three times a day. And they spied on him and found him praying. It's been persecution has come to the church, to the believers, ever since. Even the prophets of old were persecuted. That's how you know you're serving God. When I'm persecuted, and the things that I've endured and suffered from people, from the enemy, I'm like, I'm serving, I'm, I'm, thank God, I'm, I know I'm serving the Lord, and the right, and I'm in the right place because of the persecution. If you're not suffering persecution, check up on your life. Are you here? Amen. I'm giving you the word. You're going to need God. Not only today, you're going to need Him tomorrow. Yeah. But make sure because this body could expire any moment you want to see Him. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. No, and it's not by works, it's by His grace. But when you are born again, you want to serve Him only. You want to live in holiness. Amen? Amen. Amen. And the Bible says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. God didn't save you and I to serve the devil to live like him, talk like him. We did that before we knew Jesus. Amen. 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 And we're going to leave this place. We're going to leave this place one day. The generation before us now. You're going to leave. You're going to experience physical death if Jesus carries and I believe he's coming in my life. But if he don't, I'm ready. That's right. If he tarries, I'm ready. Uh -oh. Amen. Uh -oh. If he tarries, I'm ready. If something was to happen right now, to be the Bible says in the first chapter of Philippians, to be absent from the body yeah. is to be present with the Lord. Oh, yeah. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Hallelujah. Amen. This flesh expires. I'm with the Lord. I'm better off than any of you in here. Amen. Amen. The believer that passes is better off than all of us. Yes. The Lord shared that to me. When my aunt died years ago, I was preaching my first funeral. I was going down 49 to Richton, Mississippi, going through Pedal, going to Richton, Mississippi. And the Lord spoke, I said, Lord, I don't know what to say. And the Lord spoke to me and said, You tell them she's better off with me than they are there. Right. We seem to think that we're better off in the flesh. We are better off in the flesh. People are better off in the flesh that don't know Jesus. They're better off in the flesh. But the Christian, remember what Paul said in the first chapter of Philippians? For him, he said, to die is gain. It's gain. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. When the believer dies, they're better off than us. What? Because they're with the Lord. Amen. But the unbeliever, they're better off here. Amen? Amen. Yes. God is not a respecter of persons. Amen? Amen. This school I'm reading about, this is about the hedge of God here. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. 
He shall cover thee with his feathers. See, you're, you're there. You're, you're dwelling there in the secret place. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Oh, when I read that, it made me think of something. Y'all might have seen it. I was watching this mother hen. And she had a lot of chicks. And this mother hen, if she would move, I don't know how many they were, probably about, if I was to guess, uh, seven or eight. But if mother hen, the little chicks move, and, and they would want to get up under mother's mother hen. And she can cover them. You'll need another under that. Why? Because they know where Sandy's at. That's right. Yes. Amen. And if she gets up and moves again, the little chicks, well, they rock your mama. Kind of loves me to like it. They say, where's mama? Where's mama? <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Nikki gets up to go get them something. Where's mama go? <laughs> well, glory to God. That's how we are to the Father. That's how we are to him. He's Father. Hallelujah. He's God to the world. He's Father of the Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. The Bible says, Abba, Father. In other words, over there in Galatians, he's dead. Yes. Amen. Yes. Glory. Now look there with me, please. At verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror of thy life. God doesn't want you afraid if you're, if you're in the secret place. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror of thy life. Nor for the arrow that flies by day. Nor, now look at this verse 6. Here's where a lot of people don't mingle in public. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, you can't see it. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. You can't see plagues and diseases. You can see the effects of them once they're manifested in the human race. Yes. In the body. You know, it makes me think about a lady, me and Pastor Dwayne ministered to. Pastor called me. I was supposed to meet him at his office over here on 300 Shallow Road. And there was a lady there that would not leave her apartment, Brother Holly. She wouldn't leave her apartment. She was fearful. And so I get there in my work van, my cable van, and Pastor's sitting in there. And this lady's in there, so I sit down there, and we're just listening to her talk. She doesn't want to leave the house. And so Pastor and I pray for her. We cast that spirit out of her, the spirit of fear. When we cast that spirit of fear out of her, oh, man, that lady began to go and go and go, leave her house, started coming to church, being used in the gifts of the spirit, in tongues and interpretation of tongues. But she, at one time, she would not leave her house. Fear. God says in 2 Timothy 1 7 that He's not given us the spirit of fear. Yes. And when you and I are dwelling in that secret place under the shadow of the Almighty, there's no fear. That's right. You know, Brother Dennis, what about if I die? Well, you know, somebody said one time, you know, brother, they die believing God. That's right. I'd hate to die any other way. That's right. Amen. 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 I'd hate to die anyway, wouldn't you? Amen. Their next breath was the glories of heaven. Matter of fact, some have already seen it in that other realm before they leave this. The secret place. We are to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Yes. Verse 6. Verse 6. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Many people don't need to get out today because of fear. That's right. Ever since COVID, many people won't even come back to church or mingle in public again. Why? Because of the fear that hounds them, yes. that oppresses them. Verse 7, now look at this. This is the one that has the hedge of God like Job did. A thousand shall fall at thy side. This is for the church that loves the Lord. And 10,000 at thy right hand, look at this. But it shall not come out of thee. Why? Because that man dwells in the secret place. That woman dwells in the secret place. And so when plagues touch them, it, it dies. Remember John Lake? How do you know John Lake? 
You'll learn about him in the assemblies of God. Some of you that went to school, that's going to school there. Well, John G. Lake, in his day, the bubonic plague broke out. His congregation was dying. People were dying. It was bad in his day. And so John Lake didn't have anything. And these people, these uh, government officials, you know, they were all dressed up. And they said, how is it that you're walking around and this doesn't affect you? Well, John Lake quoted to him Romans 8, 2. He moved in the law of the spirit of life. Romans 8, 2 said, as Paul moved in, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So John Lake moved in that law, and John Lake said, take some of that disease and someone that just died and put it under the microscope, and they did. And they can see it living. He says, now put it on my hand and put my hand under the microscope. You can read this. And so John, on the internet, so John, and he's got a good book. I got a, it, it's a big book in my office, but John Lake is very powerful. And I know many of you have read some of his sermons. But John Lake, they put it on his hand and put his hand under the microscope. And as soon as it touched his hand, it's died. That disease died. Why? Because he dwelt in the secret Amen. place. Yes. John Lake, eat and breathe Jesus. He, he, he was trained, was in, uh, John Lake was in Africa. And all of a sudden he was in Africa and the Lord picked him up and brought him. He was translated back in his day and time. And I'm going to share this with you and you can Google it. In Spokane, Washington, in the early 1900s, it was the healthiest city in the United States. John Lake had his ministry there and he taught divine healing and he sent out healing technicians. He said, don't come back till they're healed. Some would come back the next day. Some would be two weeks later. They would find the cause what was hindering God's power from moving in their body. But in Spokane, Washington, in his day and time, he was the healthiest city in the United States. That's documented. Amen. Amen. He taught the word of God and he gave the word of God to the people and he prayed for the sick. But he lived, he lived under the hedge. That's where God wants every child of God to be. Amen. We are not to come and go. Well, you know, it's just like years ago. And I haven't had anything. And, I, and if you have, I'm not condemning you. If you understand. If you have, I'm not condemning you. So don't take it wrong. But when I was saved, I believe, well, not right when I was saved because I was a yo-yo Christian. I was up and down. I said to the Lord one day, I said, Lord, I can't serve you. I'm a yo-yo Christian. But then one day when it went, he was waiting on myself to allow him to come live. As Paul said in Galatians, it's not me that liveth, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So God was waiting on me because I was having all the strength in my own self. I went two weeks without a cigarette. I went two weeks without getting the COVID. Day. See, I was looking, it was in my strength, and then I would fail and fail and fail. And the Lord was sitting there waiting for me to allow him to live it through me. And I said, Lord, I can't do it. And so when he he was waiting on that, you can't do it. And when he came, he made an oak out of me. Amen. He wants to make an oak out of every one in here. Now, I haven't had any kind of drink, alcohol, or tobacco it's since the 90s. But but if you have last week and you repent, it, it will forgive you. But it wants you to go forward and walk with it. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 But see, God wants you to, to sacrifice your body to him. He wants your body a living. He wants, he wants, oh, thank you, Lord. He wants you to worship him with your body. Mm -hmm. That's what he wants. He wants your body to worship him in holiness. Amen. And if you're not there yet, say, Lord, help me. Strengthen me. And he will. Amen. He's not going to beat you over the head and condemn you, but he wants you to do better and exercise in those areas that are weak. Amen. Amen. Because that's what I had to do. I was a young little Christian. I was up and down, up and down, up and down. He didn't beat me over the head. He still loved me. But, he, but one day the Lord spoke to me. And said, put that off. That's not a good Christian witness. Because people would come here and be preached and they didn't want that. Right here. I was walking in all the light I was walking in. But I put a different couple of people in my life and talk about Jesus. 
in my office there at Black Machine Lane, and people would come over there, and we'd talk about Jesus, and I'm speaking. And the Lord spoke to me one day and said, that's not a good Christian witness. Well, he spoke to me because where I was at in him, I, I wanted to grow. How many wants to grow spiritually? Amen. 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 That's what the Lord wants to see. Right. He wants to see spiritual effort. He wants to see spiritual growth, but he wants to see you put effort in it. If you go to a job, and he's not here, we got a lot of people out this morning. But if Richard was here, you know, he's, he hires people, J.L. Roberts. But people that put forth effort, they're going to be promoted in, his business, in the business he works for. Right. Amen. And if somebody goes to work for jail, if they're not putting forth effort, they're not going to be there much longer. That's right. Amen. Or if someone goes to work for Josh back there, I call him the little hawk. <laughs> <laughs> if someone goes to work for Josh, and if they're not putting forth effort, well, Josh is not going to use them too much longer. Right. Well, do you think God looks at things differently? He's looking at effort in all our end. And when we put forth effort, he sees some spiritual growth that pleases him. Because the Bible says in James 4 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. You are the one that is to put forth effort first. And when you and I put forth effort first, then God says, then I'll draw near. Yes. Amen. That's why you hear people having dreams, visions, translations. John Lake had a translation from Africa. In his day and time to the United States, he was in Africa ministry. And he had great success in Africa in his day and time. And he prayed for someone, Lord, pick him up and put him back in Africa. Now, your mind might not cannot comprehend that. But Philip, in the 8th chapter of Acts, was baptizing that eunuch. That eunuch come up out of the water, and Philip was translated to Azotus. The eunuch, the Bible says, saw him no more. The Spirit of God translated Philip. Well, see, that's for us today, but that doesn't happen to your average Christian. It happens to those that hunger and thirst after him. Their main goal, no matter what, whether it's my life or death, is Jesus. Jesus. Oh, you're a fanatic. Yes, a fanatic is someone that loves Jesus more than you. Amen. Amen. God is looking for a rip. He's looking for a people in this day and time to stand up for him. Well, let me finish. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Verse 8. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see, look at that, the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord look, because that person, that individual, has made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, Thy habitation. In other words, your dwelling place is in Jesus. Because of verse 9 and the rest of the verses, he gives verse 10. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. They would put the plague, the bubonic plague on John Lake, and when they did, it died. Verse 10 was his. Oh, thank you, Lord, that's good. Verse 10 is for every Christian that puts the Lord firm. Yeah. Remember the Lord? The Lord just brought this to me real quickly. He gave me this one. Matthew 6, 33. <coughs> seek you first. Mm -hmm. yes. A lot of people don't seek God first. That's right. mm -hmm. I'm just being honest with you. Because I have to give an account to him and his own counts. That's right. Mine don't, yours don't, his does. <laughs> Amen? Amen? You're going to stand before him one day. That's right. Seek you first. First. How many people put in second? How many people tithe? If you don't tithe, you put your money first. I just can't. They're going to pull it out there. Yeah, brother, this, I can't afford to tithe. You're right. You can. I mean, if you can afford not to. Somebody said one time, I couldn't tithe until I started tithing. They couldn't do it until they started and then the blessings come in. Yes. I remember when I first heard the sermon on the I, 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 
I come back from the Lord after being backslid. And I knew a little bit about tithing and not tithing. But when I came back and I heard it, and I heard it rot, and I come back, I couldn't wait to give. I couldn't wait to get paid again. And I've been giving ever since, and plus offerings, and the Lord's been merciful. Amen. And the money comes in. Yes. And I told you all about some of the ways the Lord has blessed me financially. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought, now if I didn't do that, if I didn't tithe, there's no way I would have been blessed financially by others. Right. And I told you about the time that the Holy Ghost stopped me. I was backing up. I was backing up. One more step. Didn't know what I was doing. I was in the aisle of Bill Blunts and working, pulling some cable. And uh, me and Pee Wee, uh, we were pulling some cable, and I was we didn't want to kink in it. And so I was stretching it out. And all of a sudden, I just stopped. The Lord just stopped me. Just stopped me. Woo! All right. God. <laughs> yeah. And right there on my heel was a drop off. And, uh, uh, a deep drop off, and there was concrete. One more step, I'd have been a corner. Broke my back or busted my head. But the Holy Ghost stopped. That hand was there. God's folks said, Stop! Yeah. My body stopped. Yeah. You think you believe in the Lord? Yes, yes. I do. I love you yes. more than yes. I love any other. Yes. I love you more than I love any other. Amen. 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 Do you? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you. Well, let's read. We're reading about the hedge of God. Verse 10, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Then verse 11, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion in the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Now look at verse 14. Because he has sent his love upon me. God is saying to you this morning, you and I, because he has sent his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Verse 15. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. He didn't say he wouldn't have any trouble. He said, I will deliver. He said, I'll deliver him. And he said, I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And then verse 16. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. I love the Lord and I love you. Thank Amen. You. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But there's oh, thank you, Lord. The Lord just reminded me in Timothy, this perilous times coming. Timothy said it by the Holy Ghost. He said it in his day, and there's some more of those times coming. Am I trying to put fear in you? The fear of God I am, but not the fear as you think. Amen. Amen. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. That's right. Where's the fear of God at in the earth today? Where's the fear of the Lord? Should be in every Christian. Many of the church has lost the fear of God. But God is saying, come back and humble ourselves. Thank you, Lord. The Lord just spoke to me. But he's running the show. I'm not running the show. See, that's the problem. Man runs the show the majority of the time. And while I said that, the Holy Ghost just said, uh, everyone, tell everyone to come to the altar and humble themselves before me. I wasn't going to say that. Because there's some people that God is wanting you to see you actually humble yourself before him. Because many have Because of pride and because of flesh. Amen. So I'm just going to do what the Lord just gave me. The altars are open. Yes. It's God asking you this morning to come and humble yourselves and repent before Him. Yes. And make a dedication to Him this morning that you're going to serve Him. And by doing so, God will place, the altars are open, God will place the hedge of God around you that there 
there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh to thy dwelling, and you won't have to fear it never again. In the name of Jesus, come and humble yourself before the Lord and repent before 